and let us all that we can to build a better future. Okay, it looks like corporate media is addressing something in regards towards voter turnout. BSDNC did a segment as if asking if Democrats are doing enough to win Gen Z voters. Now, I'm going to say that they did secure enough votes to have them win, I guess, somewhat of a, well, decent amount of seats in 2022. However, that's not saying much because the Democrats did not follow through with their student uh, debt forgiveness plan. So let's play this. Shout out to Case Study QB. If you're not following him on Twitter, please do so. Listen to these mental gymnastics from BSDNC. So speaking of younger... And of course, everyone's favorite gymnastic of the, uh, g- gymnast of them all, who's able to do cartwheels and flips in front of corporate media to defend the establishment Democrats, Simone Sanders. Voters, a very powerful voting bloc in the mix, Gen Z. And you've got one Democratic strategist who's saying that these voters really don't care about party or candidates. They're driven by policies. Uh, as, a, as a young person that used to work in Democratic politics for a very long time... That is literally what I used to tell people. I, I worked for Bernie Sanders. When people asked me why, I said, I really identified with what then. But you didn't believe in it. And there's also a lot of reports of Bernie Sanders' campaign being sabotaged. Now, of course, Bernie didn't do anything to really address it, so that's on him. But nonetheless, 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 this is where we're at. And Senator Sanders was talking about. So, Juanita, do you think that Democrats are doing enough right now to win these voters over to their side? I am talking about early investments in education and outreach today. Like, don't wait till next spring. Like, start right now. Because I didn't detect a single lie in that op-ed piece when it talked about the reality that you need to talk to and engage these voters on a substantive level. And do not make a mistake of assuming that you have them in the bag, which we know the Democratic Party has towed the line on in the past. So this is the opportunity But the Democrats will, and plus they got their best option of them all. Bully people into telling them to vote blue no matter who. Dox people. Shadow ban them. Censor them. Attack, attack, attack. Make people feel guilty. Do thought-provoking videos saying, this is why you need to support Biden. Because Trump. That's what the Democrats will do. Right now, to start investing that $72 million that Democrats have raised in the last quarter and making sure they're making these engagements on the ground right now for the next 17 months, because Gen Z is looking to flex a muscle, just like they did in the midterms, just like we saw in Kansas and Michigan and other states across the country. Hey, you're forgetting a couple other generations like boomers, Gen Xers. And hey, everybody remember the broke millennials? Remember us? We're still around. Still starving, too. Hey, hey, Gen Z, listen, listen, you, you don't have to listen to me, right? But just a heads up, don't don't fall into the same trap that happened to the other generations. Break away from the two party system, man. You don't you just 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 don't trust the Democrats. They, they say they got your best interest at heart. They don't. Oh, you better believe that they don't. Because it's about the issues and zeroing in on things like climate, mm. LGBTQ rights, abortion rights and access is going to be critical here. I also think the economy, I mean, Sir Michael, when you look at the flip side, yep. w- Republicans are just refusing to refusing to adjust their policies on yeah. some of the very things we need to just talk about climate, um, abortion, uh, guns, right? Let's talk about climate, abortion, and guns, guns, guns. First of all, Democrats haven't done anything about that. And at this point, they never will. So, you know, it's, it's, it's here to stay. It's not going away anytime soon. So keep your heads on a swivel, folks. Okay. Just be be careful and be safe out there. Treat people with kindness. Okay. Now let's talk about climate change. Democrats take money from big oil. A lot of the corporate Democrats do that. Okay. So that's not going to change. And not to mention, look, we got to do something about industrial pollution because it is impacting our waterways, our air, our soil. But, you know, I guess we're not going to do anything about that because Democrats profit off of that too. And finally, abortion. Important issue. Very serious. I remember all the pink pussy hat people saying they'd be in the streets 24-7. Saying they'd be doing protests if Trump ever got rid of it. And Roe v. Wade died under the Biden-Harris administration. And last I checked, Biden and Harris and everybody in their little administration 
are all Democrats. Huh. This could have been avoided. And yes, it could have been avoided if the Democrats, especially under Obama's administration, were actually a little bit more forceful in having uh, RBG resign and actually fighting to ensure that they at least still have somewhat of a majority in the Supreme Court. Yes, it would be a liberal Supreme Court, but nonetheless, the Democrats wouldn't be crying or using this tactic like, oh, no, we got to conserve Supreme Court. Give us money. Just hey, G Gen Z, listen, listen. The Democrats don't have your best interests at heart because they don't like you. They don't think about you and they don't respect you. And how do I know this? Because the Democratic Party, just like the Republican Party, don't respect the other generations either. It's one big club and they're screwing over the American people. Right. So uh, and doing so could, you know, help them with the younger yeah, generation. Maybe. So why stick with this strategy? And, and can you talk to me? Just explain to me how you have a young people convention <laughs> turning point, And then when you did the pan of the crowd, because I, I looked at mm -hmm. the footage, there was there were no young people. I mean, mm -hmm. let me just say this. I have my personal thoughts on it, but I'm going to talk purely as a strategy. OK, here. give it to me. Joe Biden. Oh, received bra bra brace yourself for this one, folks. This is big brain tactics right here. 50% approval among voters ages 18 to 29 when he became president. High approvals, I would argue. Now that support is around 38%. You look at his support among African-Americans, particularly younger African-Americans, 83, 84% approval now around 74%. You can what about Republicans? You, you, Republicans don't need those two groups. I'm being honest. I'm being very candid about this. Some people may not like it, but the truth is what it is. They don't need those votes, Simone. They haven't received those votes in 40, 50 years. It is the truth. Joe Biden needs those votes. If you're looking at that blue wall, you're looking at Michigan, Georgia, Pennsylvania, some states where you're talking about a difference of 12, 15, 18,000 votes, you cannot afford to lose two critical key blocks. And I think that Joe Biden is in risk of losing them. Mm. Juanita, another ad that's about to be cut. Uh, young people. So let's have democracy in the chat. Type one, if you think that guy's plan is solid. Type two, my God, the Democrats are in for a rude awakening. Republicans don't need you. Uh <laughs> Because let's be real, as you the electorate know? is younger and more diverse, these two bases of votes are going to be critical for both parties. You can count on they that. They are going to be vote. very critical. Okay, well, look, I'm just going to speak here from my perspective, from my point of view. I think that the Democrats and a lot of these uh talking head corporate neoliberal pundits are once again going to be panicking. And how do I know that they're panicking? Because they're freaking out about Dr. Cornell West campaign. They're freaking out about RFK Jr. They're freaking out about the fact that Trump is still running his campaign strong. So they're right now trying to present something, or at least that what that segment showed is that everything's good and that the Democrats can win. This is setting up a false narrative that somehow, somehow, somehow the Democrats will be successful. The Democrats were the ones that failed to follow through with their promises. AOC and Bernie never held Biden's feet to the fire. Many of Trump's foreign and domestic policies are still being implemented. So Honestly, vote blue no matter who. Why do I need to vote Democrat? This is a legit question. And I hope somebody who's a vote blue no matter who person. I mean, let's be respectful here. All right. Enough with the name calling. Enough of that. Why do people need to support and vote for Biden and the Democrats when we got nothing? Nothing. Okay. His polling number is terrible. And there are many people outside the Democratic Party that see this. 50% of Americans are identifying themselves as independents. Again, this administration has a lot of explaining to do because things got worse for Americans. And somebody like Trump is going to capitalize on it. And I think it's long overdue that we break away from the system. So honestly, explain to me, why do we got to vote for Democrats? Why? Why, when, again, the entire primary is also rigged in their favor, too. I mean, the game is rigged. So if you're a Democratic voter and let's say let's say you vote for Biden, fine. But still, nonetheless, your vote still is irrelevant because the Democratic Party has indicated they are a private institution. 
and they could rig the primary any which way they want. At the end of the day, the voter does not matter. I'm curious to know. Folks, 2024 is going to be an interesting election year, and we're still in 2023.